Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Hawkeye Firefly 2. This is what they are calling a micro action camera. And I know the V1 has its following mainly because of its incredibly cheap price and form factor. However, I decided to skip that one because from the video samples that I saw, the quality was meant to be 1080p 30, but for me it just wasn't there compared to my current favorite mini action camera which is the Mobius Mini. Now I understand that the Mobius Mini is a lot more expensive but I'd rather pay the extra and have the better quality but I do understand that some people just want a better result than what their FPV camera can produce so I do get it. But this version 2 caught my interest because, on paper at least, it exceeds what the Mobius Mini is capable of. It's also cheaper and can do up to 2.5K in 30fps, but what I'm more interested in is its 1080p 60fps capability, while at the same time it has the more popular box shape, which is preferred for FPV, and it's a similar weight, although the Mobius Mini is slightly lighter at 27 grams against the 33 grams of the Firefly 2. So let's take a look at what you get in the box. We have the camera itself which comes with a silicon cover installed and it's this which makes it IPX4 splash proof but I would in no way call this camera water resistant. For example if we take a look at the camera out of the casing it has holes everywhere and I don't think the silicon protector would save it from being submerged in water but it would protect it perhaps perhaps from wet grass and maybe light rain. A problem I have with the silicon protector is that it's quite tricky to get on the camera and the lens at the front is a fingerprint magnet and it's pretty much impossible not to mark the lens when putting it on or taking it off which you have to do and I'll explain why later. And that means you end up with smudges or a glaze over the lens which even with a lick of the tongue or some lens cleaning equipment it will still be difficult to clean because the protector covers a lot of the lens at the front and even placing the camera onto your copter can cause your fingers to come into contact with the lens which will also give you that smudge on the front and you will get misty results so you really have to be careful with that. And with the protector on, it's also really difficult to find the correct orientation of the camera as it's only semi-transparent and even more confusingly, the Firefly logo on each side is not the top and bottom of the camera. The power and the mode button is the top of the camera, so if you get that wrong, then your footage will come out sideways. The camera uses a sequence of LEDs to tell you what mode it's in and whether it's recording and those LEDs are dim anyway so coupled with the cover and you being outside it's really difficult to see what the LEDs are doing. But with all that being said I would recommend using the silicon cover but not because of the waterproofing aspect. These small CMOS cameras are susceptible to rolling shutter jello and if you have vibration issues on your copter then this material is going to help dampen that. As you can see you are given an angled mount which is made of plastic so it's going to also transfer vibrations through to the camera and at the same time the silicon stops the camera from slipping off of this mount which I'll go over later. So even though this is marketed as a micro action camera, its main purpose is clearly to be mounted on a quadcopter with this 30 to 40 degree angle on it. The mount also has a tripod hole underneath which is a nice touch, however I'm going to be mounting mine to the recently reviewed HGLRC Arrow 3. So I've removed the front carbon plate because the mount doesn't fit otherwise, then I've used some very strong double sided tape for sticking carpets down as well as some cable ties so that isn't going to go anywhere. My first impressions of this camera though is that it's actually not that micro. It's 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters, but the back is almost 40 millimeters long, which makes it longer than a Session 5. And yes, it's a lot lighter, but 
I think it would be a struggle to use effectively on anything smaller than a 3 inch model and it's not much shorter than the Mobius Mini either which also conveniently fits perfect onto this supplied mount. The Firefly 2 does have a slightly bigger battery at 500 milliamp against the 300 milliamp of the Mobius Mini and they say that you can get up to an hour's worth of recording out of it but I think that's just marketing speed because the camera can also record in 720p and when I recorded in 1080p 60 I got around about 40 minutes out of it which is respectable However, the Mobius Mini can do about 30 minutes, which isn't that far off, but the Firefly 2 does win that one. The thing is, though, it's already got me on the back foot, because if we take a look at the other stuff that you get in the package, we have a little controller board with a 1.25 pitch JST connector attached to the end of it, along with a cable which has a hefty composite video out connector, along with a USB type A connector and that is for charging but also data transfer from the micro SD card but this is the biggest disappointment for me they are using an 8 pin mini B USB connector into the camera which is really rare to the point where you could say it's proprietary I mean I know why they have used it because your bog standard USB connector has less pins so they can utilize more connections such as video out and also remote triggering but at the same time if you don't want to use their heavy lead you're gonna have to scour the internet to make your own one up because it's not a popular connector now I know that might sound a bit picky but despite this fairly bespoke connector unlike the Mobius there's no software to change any of the settings it's all done through this little control board so you have to plug the control board into the camera then the 8 pin USB connector to get the composite video out you then have to either have a conjoining connector like this one or some kind of monitor that it will plug into and then you turn the camera on using the power button and you have to use the controller board to change the settings now call me spoiled but all of that is an absolute pain in the arse especially if you don't have the gear to change the settings and if you don't do that then Hawkeye has left its lovely logo in the corner of the screen which I'm sure you can all agree we all want a logo in our HD footage in the same way that we want a watermark from some sort of trial version of a video encoder but that being said you can use the provided cable to output to a VTX so if you want your FPV feed and HD feed done through the same camera it will do it with a latency of around 40 to 50 milliseconds however unless you do some messing about with the power system then you will be relying on the internal battery of the camera not cutting out which begs the question, why not just use a split or a turtle V2? Anyways, I'll go into the settings part a bit later because you can use the camera without changing the settings if you can put up with the logo and some other things. So on the same side as the USB port, we have the micro SD card slot, which requires a class 10 or above, and will take up to a 64 gigabyte card. As you can see, the card is really pushed in there, so you will need long nails to insert it and also to get it back out or some kind of tool. There's also a tiny reset button if the camera gets bricked. However, that hasn't happened thus far. Whereas with the Mobius Mini, sometimes it does do that so that's a win for the Firefly although with the Mobius Mini I just keep a small pin with me and a press of the reset button sorts it out and you don't lose any of your settings either so it's not that much of an inconvenience then on the top we have the power and mode button so if you press the power button for three seconds you should get a blue light and that's the 1080p 60 mode or if you have used the controller board to change into 720p then it will be in 720p mode but it's still 720p 60 so I'm not sure why you do that unless you enjoy lower quality footage for some reason 
Then a short press of the power button will start the video recording and the blue LED will start to flash and then another short press of the power button will stop the recording. A three second press of the mode button will turn that LED red and this is the 2.5K 30fps mode which I'm not really interested in myself as my preference is 60fps to go along with the smooth flow of flying freestyle and the video out also stopped working in 2.5k mode as well but maybe that's a firmware problem then a further three second press of the mode button will send both LEDs blue and red and this is the photo mode so you press the power button to take a photo and the resolution of the photo is 4000 by 3000 and to power off the camera it's another three second press of the power button or after three minutes it's set up to power off on its own. So while on the subject of its default settings, it's also set to chop the video after three minute segments and it's set to loop so once the SD card is full it will overwrite existing footage much like a car DVR would do which is why you really want to go into the settings and change that. But before I go over that I'll show you what else you get in the box. We have two straps for securing the camera on its mount and again this is really why you need to use the silicon case because otherwise the camera will easily slip when used in conjunction with the provided mount. And then you're also given a manual which is fairly extensive but the print is really small. So if you struggle with that they do have a downloadable version which I will link in the description of this video. One thing I thought was interesting though is that the manual states on the first page that this product is not to be dropped or crashed which is just what we need for FPV isn't it? You need to use this lead to also charge the camera so when you plug the USB into a USB charging outlet the camera will turn on and the LED will go blue as if it's ready to record and in order to charge what you have to do is long press the power button for three seconds and then the LED will turn green and the camera is then charging. When it's fully charged the green LED will go out. So this is the view of the video out, whether you're using a monitor or goggles. We've got a timer for how long the camera's been turned on. We've got the name of the camera in the middle, and we've also got the voltage of the battery. And we've also got the battery status, which is fully charged at the moment. So if I press the left button on the controller board, we'll go into the menu, and you'll see I can go into the video resolution. So it's a center press to select those options, and a center press to select the option. Then video quality, we've got super fine and fine. I'm choosing super fine which is 40 megabit. We've got the video clip time which I've got selected as off because I don't want it to split or cut off. We've got loop video off because I don't want it to re-record. We've got external voltage if you're using an external voltage. You do a time lapse as well. We've got quick record which I've got selected as off but that is if you want auto record and I've got the sound on and the mic volume I've got selected at 50 percent which is the stock setting and then we've got this metering mode which is actually not working with this version of the firmware that it's come with so it's set as center as standard however you would think that multi would be better for the best dynamic range but anytime I changed it to multi or spot and then reset the camera it would always come back to the center option and the day after I recorded my flight footage they came out with a version of the firmware that fixes this so I'll have to do a, another video trying the multi to see if it makes a difference but it's easy to update the firmware it's just a bin file you put on a empty micro SD card and it updates itself I'll link that in the below but we've got the exposure change there which is set at 0.3 as default but you can change that the white balance is set to Hawkeye but we've got all these different options as well the color I would just leave as natural and we've got these effects as well which I would leave as normal because anything you want to change you do in post-production I would say but we've got the contrast which is set at zero saturation and sharpness has its own setting and then if we go over to the right button we can change 
other settings so it's got a beeper so I've put that on and we've also got the status LED you'd want that on and you can set it to never power off if you want we've got clock settings so you can have a date stamp but I don't like that and you can also have a date format so lots of settings but I've got that off this is also where you would turn their logo off do that because it's annoying and we've got language English there OSD control you want on and the TV system I've got NTSC flicker I've got as 50 Hertz because I'm based in Europe and then image rotation I've got as off because I don't need it and you can reset everything there you can format the SD card SD card info and firmware version and then if you do a long press of the right button you can actually view the files on the SD card but I don't have a micro SD card inserted you can also speed up and slow down the footage if you wish to do so as well so I've got both the Mobius Mini and the Firefly 2 on the HLRC Arrow 3 and can you guess which is which? So the Firefly 2 is the one on the right and the Mobius Mini is the one on the left and I will flick between the two so you can see the different quality of each on full screen but the first thing I noticed is the Mobius Mini is dealing much better with dynamic range you'll notice on the Firefly 2 that the ground will go dark when the camera is pointed more towards the sky whereas the Mobius Mini does a better job like there however that could just be as I mentioned in the settings that the Firefly 2 is stuck with its metering mode in the center and it might be when I switch it to multi that it improves so I'll have to update on that but when I did this flight that firmware wasn't an option and I imagine as well if you bought this camera that it will come with the very first firmware so you'll have to do that update I also noticed that the Firefly 2 has a slightly bluer hue to the picture than the Mobius Mini and also the audio of the Firefly 2 is pretty unusable so let's take a listen now many would argue that on a 3 inch model you'd want to cut the audio anyways because it's just a horrible scream but if I switch the audio to the Mobius Mini I mean it still sounds horrible but when you actually speak into the microphone I think the microphone is better on the Mobius Mini. I'm sounding very biased to the Mobius Mini but I'm not you know it's just what I'm finding if a better camera comes out then I'll tell you but I actually think the Mobius Mini is giving better results I think it's better at dynamic range I think it's better at color of course there are cameras better than the Mobius Mini such as the Session 5 for example and you could even argue that the split does a better job I think dynamic range wise the run cam stuff is even better than the Mobius Mini one thing I thought was interesting as well is that they claim that the Firefly 2 has a field of view of 160 degrees and the Mobius Mini has a field of view of 135 so you can get the Mobius Mini as 110 but also 135 I would highly recommend if you are interested in the Mobius Mini to get the 135 degree field of view it seems to be more of a field of view than the Firefly 2 so either they have underestimated the field of view of the Mobius Mini or overestimated the field of view of the Firefly 2. Either way, the Mobius Mini has got a higher field of view than the Firefly 2. So that is my results, really. Initially, I'm going to have to load that firmware on the Firefly to see if the metering makes a difference, but until then, I will link both of these cameras in the below and as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers
Thank <laughs> you. 